Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage for Winning Women, How to Win Women Voters, Penny Nance, Kate Obenshane, Ort Sklar, and Day Gardner. Fantastic. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today for this uh, amazing panel, women, w excuse me, Winning Women. And uh, we've got some extraordinary guests and panelists with us today. Penny Nance, President of Concerned Women for America, Dr. Day Gardner, and uh, Kate Obenshane. And we're just going to have a discussion here. We really want this to be informative, but also uh, talk about some real things that you can bring back to your communities about this very important issue. Um, so I'd like to start off. You know, we hear, we heard a lot about uh, the war on women in 2012, and in particular, this video, The Life of Julia, that came out. And supposedly, conservatives are so anti-woman. Mm -hmm. So if you could just tell us all clearly, why are you a conservative woman? <laughs> well, I'm a conservative woman for a host of issues. But number one, first and foremost, and I think the narrative, the political narrative that we've got to push back on, is the idea that women are victims that somehow our system of government, that our economic system is innately unfair to women. That's an argument that when you really look at it, doesn't hold up to the light of day. It clearly is false. So, I, you know, I think um, as, a, you know, in particular women who identify as feminist, you know, the idea that you can't compete on an equal playing field that instead you need the heavy hand of government to come along and to tip the scales in your favor, it should be an anathema to them. I'm a conservative because I believe in life, I believe in marriage, I believe in the free market economic system, and I believe in strong defense, and I believe in the American people. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Day, can you tell oh, us why uh, you're a conservative okay. woman? Everything she said, first of all. And um, I think it's, it's just necessary for us to look at the other side, look what, what they offer. And you understand, well, I know definitely why I'm not a liberal. Yeah, right. um, so I think that that's the bottom line. I'm strongly pro-life. I'm a born-again Christian. Um, I believe in biblical values and ideas and ideals. And of course, uh, that's not what I'm seeing on the other side. So I think it's, it's case in point. That's the reason why. Hmm. I think I'm a conservative. I just um, grew up with this innate understanding of how precious our liberty is mm -hmm. and that that liberty is not because some president gives it to me or my government mm -hmm. gives it to me, mm -hmm. but my God in heaven mm -hmm. Amen. decided Amen. that all creatures are blessed with freedom, with liberty. And it is an overriding passion in my life. I know some people look at me like I'm from Mars, but I am dead serious about preserving our God-given liberty. When some people say, oh, I have trouble, I, I, I want to just um, win people to Christianity, so how do I uh, marry that with uh, wanting to be political and wanting to champion what I believe? And that, that is my mission field, to, mm -hmm. to convince, uh, make people understand that God's gift to us, God's number one gift yeah. to us, our freedom is mm -hmm. under direct mm -hmm. assault right now. Right. And I think particularly women's freedoms mm -hmm are under assault. Of course, around the world, as right. liberals just love to ignore the, the um, attack on women from radical Muslims. Mm -hmm. But here in America, exactly what you were talking about, Penny, mm -hmm. this assault on our individuality and our ambition and our ability to su succeed on our own, the left is actually telling us women, particularly young college women, high school women, mm -hmm. you can't do it on your own. You can't compete. Isn't that ironic that the champions of the feminist movement are now telling mm -hmm. women, you are so pathetic, Julia. It's not Bob, by the way. It was the life of Julia, not the life of Bob. You are so pathetic. You can't even pay for your own contraception. Mm -hmm. You can't get a meaningful job. Um, you need mm -hmm. government. I'm a conservative because I reject that outlook on life. I believe each individual is capable of success. Well, I'd like to pick up on your point uh, with women. And I know Penny CWA is doing so much on college campuses these days. Can you tell us what 
What is it that you're seeing among young women today? Uh, is there anything to give us hope that they are going to pursue a different path when it does come to their uh, ideals and the way that they see leadership in this country? You know, I am really encouraged. I was just with about 100 young college-age women yesterday. We have 23, 23 26 uh, chapters for our Young Women for America chapters. In fact, we have a table stop by and you know, take some material home to a kid that you know that might be interested. Um, all over this country, everything from Princeton to Liberty University. And when I'm with these young women, I am so encouraged because guess what? They get it. Mm -hmm. They're on fire. They're smart. They don't want to be boxed into some sort of preconceived notion. Because you know what? Mon women are not monolithic, regardless of what you hear on the media, regardless of what you hear the left say. We, we think for ourselves, and that's what really gets them. Mm -hmm. and, um, but, but these young women you know, push back on the narrative that they're somehow incapable, and they're very strongly pro-life. I mean, I, I, we've won with that generation we're struggling on the issue of marriage, but guess what? On the issue of life, they are very strong. And so, um, I, you know, I, they, they don't buy into the notion that, you know, you've got to have government-paid abortion on demand, and you've got a taxpayer-funded uh, birth control, and you've got to have taxpayer-funded expensive daycare programs and the whole cadre of social programs. Their goal is to be independent, and to turn around, and the other, the other point that I really love about this generation is they get that we are called to care for the least of these. Mm -hmm. And so that means for the sisters among us that are struggling, it's on us to turn around and give a helping hand. We can't just wait for the government to do it. It's our job. And so anyway, I, I'm very encouraged. I think we've got an amazing group of conservative women coming up that are, are credentialed and strong and love Jesus. <laughs> well, Day, you know, one of the um, statistics from the 2012 election that really struck me was how poorly Mitt Romney did among minority women. Um, Black women went for uh, Barack Obama 96%. Uh, it was just slightly better among Hispanic women. What are you seeing in the black community? And what are you doing um, to give us some hope that there, th this is not something that's going to be solved in a day, uh, but it's something that we as conservatives should be focused on? Well, you're absolutely right. First of all, in 2012 election, with, when it came to blacks especially, and not just black women, we're talking about black as a community, it was a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally spoke with someone in the upper, um, in the upper areas of the campaign and said, you know what, there are, first of all, there's a problem among a lot of blacks and other Americans, the fact that, Mormon, uh, that uh, Rami was a Mormon, that's a problem. I'm a born-again Christian. A lot of uh, blacks were saying, well, I don't know, he's a Mormon. So I, but I thought, you know what, let's hear what this guy has to say. So I called the campaign and said, you know, we can pull together three to 500 black leaders from all over the country. A lot of these are ministers that have 10 and 12,000 people in their churches. Their congregations are large, huge leaders, including Alveda King and Star Park and a lot of the people that you know. And um, I said, well, we'll pull together these people. Let's let Romney come and talk to us. They promised that he would. And what happened is that um, a few weeks later, uh, we contacted, you know, they, said they weren't getting, at first they were getting back to me right away. And all of a sudden, I wasn't hearing from them. And they said, well, we've made, a, we've made a decision. We are going to talk to the black community. And Romney is going to speak to the NAACP. Mm. And my thought was, who in that organization is going to, is there, there's not one person that's going to vote for him. Mm -hmm. Not one. But you know what? The thing is, that's what's hap what happens in a lot of elections. We're marginalized. We're thought of, you know, our vote is already going the other way to the Democrats and to the liberals. You're not going to get our vote. But you know what? If you don't ask, you will not get the vote. Right. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of blacks out there who are Republicans. A lot of them call, are now calling themselves independent because they don't have much faith in the Republican Party. But you know what? It's necessary for everybody who's running for office, especially if you're a Republican, to not only say, I am a Reagan Republican, mm -hmm. start saying, I'm also a Frederick Douglass Rep Republican. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. I'm also a Harriet Tubman Republican. Mm -hmm. I'm also a Sojourner Truth Republican. And the thing is, that will actually give black people something to look at and say, well, you know what? It's not the party for whites, for um, uh, white, uh, very uh, Catholic, 
the people. It's, also, it's a party for everybody, for all of us. And I think it's necessary for every candidate to come out and say so, mm -hmm. that you're representative of all people and include me, ask me for my vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kate, you've been involved with elections all of your life. Uh, you know Virginia with your eyes closed. Tell us, what is it um, that conservative candidates could be doing better when it, when it comes to elections and speaking to women? And who are our best messengers? Because it seems like every, especially male candidates, look like deer in the headlights when they're asked <laughs> about these issues. They do, don't they? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they say things that I really wish they wouldn't say. <laughs> um, gosh, there's so much that we need to be doing as conservatives when we put ourselves out there for election. I, I, there's so much that you guys just said that I wanted to respond to, but one thing I want to say is the women on college campuses that are conservative, it's in spite of the indoctrination right. and the brutalization right. that they're facing they're on bullied. college campuses. They are absolutely so bullied by the professors. Support those right. campus organizations that uh, mm -hmm. promote conservatism for women in particular. The hookup culture is sucking the life oh. out of our baby girls. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you've Same got right. to do something to help them. But back to what we need to be doing politically. Gosh, there's so much I'm passionate about today. Um, we have to be, first of all, focusing on our message, which of course is a message that resonates with women. But keep in mind, when we go out there as conservatives, there's not a vacuum. We have been attacked so viciously. Mm -hmm. People really do think that you and I hate women mm -hmm. and that any Republican candidate hates women. We've got to take that seriously. Yeah. We've got to respond to that. We've got to push back against the lies that the left is putting forward, that 77 cent myth. Yeah. we got to push yeah. back mm -hmm. this notion that, um, that we uh, want to take away women's contraception. Mm -hmm. We just don't actually want to, everybody to have to pay for it. But we've got to push back against the negative messages. Mm -hmm. Then we have to articulate why freedom is better than this dependence on government mm -hmm. that the left promotes. We have to, so we have to push back. Mm -hmm. Then we have to have our positive message for why we are the ones that are helping right. women. Look at the Democrats. They're in, women are at the highest poverty rate in 20-some uh, years right now. That's not our, our message. Ours is one that encourages women to own businesses, mm -hmm. to thrive and to succeed. Yeah. And then the final thing that we've got to do, and this is a tough message sometimes for conservatives, because I was, I was with those conservatives that say, well, we shouldn't have to you know, have women out there to reach out to women. I, I agreed. I thought, we believe in the message and the principles. Mm -hmm. Well, I've changed. Yeah. We've got to have women out That's there true. talking to other women, OK? Yeah, okay we we must. And we have a deep and powerful bench of strongly conservative women that you all and I am proud to have out there championing mm -hmm. our ideas. But like we were talking to Ralph back there about the contraception yeah, debate. Right. When that happened, that whole Sandra Fluke yeah. thing, remember that? Yeah. What was the Republican response? Nothing. Yeah. It was. They, we'd had a response. And all I remember is they paraded out a long line of elderly white clergymen mm -hmm. to say, this is a religious freedom mm -hmm. issue. OK, that's correct. It was a religious freedom mm -hmm. issue. But we played right into their hands. Yeah. You know, uh, Republicans yeah. and conservatives hate women, and they want to take well, away we, your we contraception. Con we constantly play into their hands. One of the most important things is we have to start, stop using their rhetoric. Mm -hmm. uh, if I hear yes. one more time the war on women, mm -hmm. what war on women? Mm -hmm. There's a war on babies, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. When I think about abortion in this country, there's a war on children. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to stop using their words. I, that's what they want us to do. Mm -hmm. Or you know? use the, yeah. their words exactly. against them. Right. There's exactly. a war on conservative women, frankly. Right. Exactly. There's a war on women's um, independence and freedom and ability to succeed and prosper. Use exactly. it against them. Exactly. You know, if I could just interject here, I, you said, both of you said such great things, but um, you know, it's important to remember, because we even had pushed back on whether we should be specifically messaging to women. So let's get past that, mm -hmm. because when you don't, the other side does, and their narrative sticks. Don't be afraid to have women spokespeople messaging directly. I'm sorry if you think it's reductive. It's important. If you want to win, you're going to do it. So, and they, that. that's, But that's exactly what they do. And if you <clears> think about it, it's either anybody, when you see anything on television and the news and photos, it's always uh, either white men white women, 
a mixture of uh, white men and women, but the things that were the black women. Yeah. You know? So I think that it's most important to also make sure that you're, that it shows that you represent all of us again. Mm -hmm. And Penny, could, I, could I just interject something too about the whole issue of the contraceptive battle? It is absolutely, if you're a woman of faith and your faith comes into contradiction with what they want, you've got to shut up, pay up, and get over it as mm -hmm. far as they're concerned. We're not going to do that. We're going to speak for ourselves. But I think what we've got to do is present to American women, okay, you want, a group of you want free birth control. We understand that. But do you understand that nothing's free? There's no such thing as a free lunch. So now you've got it in your health care, but your health care has gone up 30%. How's that working for you? Because by the way, you could have gotten a pack of pills for $9 a month at Walmart. So... You know, I think what we've got to do is really explain what the choice is. There is unintended consequences or intended consequences for government policies. And what is the end result? And that's what we're not explaining. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe also we need to work on our, this is a tough message too, on our compassion and the way we uh, message, not only with our diversity, because yeah. optics matter and we got to get over that. They matter a lot. Obama's really good at that yeah. and we see the results. Of course. Um, but, Let's realize that women are hurting out there, and they're hurting disproportionately right now, and particularly single women. I think we have a great opportunity to reach out mm -hmm. to single, mm -hmm. um, single moms who are now being forced because of this whole um, the health care bill where single women are being forced to have multiple jobs because their benefits are being cut back, their hours are being cut back, so they have to have multiple jobs. Um, gas prices, grocery prices, those are falling disproportionately hard mm -hmm. on women at the lower socio end of the economics ladder and we need to be really let's be their champion yeah. women uh, women's yeah. ability to defend themselves uh, particularly single women mm -hmm. they have a right to have a firearm in their house that has multiple rounds so they can yes. defend themselves Amen. and their children let's message to them that's right it Honey, was that you, stat, you it was that more stat about why why single women so disproportionately vote for mm -hmm. Democrats and they, and they uh, because did. it seems like they are the ones who are looking for opportunity mm -hmm. and freedom and yet is our, is our message as conservatives scaring mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. Well, and, um, he, and you're right, uh, you know, both uh, McCain and Ann Romney carried married women mm -hmm. overwhelmingly in the last, in 2008-2012, but, uh, but Obama carried single women by 38 points. It was such a huge difference that it, it overwhelmingly skews the number on the gender gap. It is single women. So the question is, you know, who presents a better option for you and understands you? It was that stat, and I don't remember the exact stat, but it, the question was, which candidate cares about me and people like me? And Obama got, what, 89% for that versus Obama? They didn't, people did not believe that Mitt Romney understood their lives. And women, single women who were struggling, particularly single women with children, absolutely didn't believe it. You've got to actually present what you really believe for them, that you want them to have a life in which they can excel. And most importantly, as a mom, I can tell you, you want better for their kids. We live in the country that's an exceptional nation, and in one generation, you can go from abject poverty to professional class, up to middle class, maybe even upper class. In two generations, it's a snap making good choices. Not every, life's complicated. You can't always do that. Sometimes things go south. In that case, there should be a lim limited government option to that, not a handout, a, a short-term help. But we need to have those options and not be afraid of that. But we also, as a community, as a community of believers, have to step forward and help them. And that is, should be part of our message. We understand that you're broken. We understand we live in a broken world. We're all broken. Yeah. Let's love each other. Let's try to do better. And we want better for your kids. Yeah. One of the things I think is really important, too, <laughs> is to realize that when women hear us big government um, and, and trying to shrink government, they misunderstand a lot of, I know a lot of black women do, and think that that means less programs. You're going to mm. take programs away from me that I need, something that I'm involved in. So I think it's necessary to explain in detail for everybody who's running for office to explain in detail what it means when you say to have a smaller government. And I think one of the reasons why we have it's so blown it with, conserv with uh, single women is that there, there has been a vacuum on our side. With Romney, 
Remember that one debate where he was a rock star mm -hmm. and Obama didn't even show up? Mm -hmm. The gender gap disappeared after that debate mm -hmm. because he powerfully articulated our vision. And, um, and then after that, he just tanked. Same thing with Ken Cuccinelli in Virginia last year. Ken tanked among, I mean, 40 some percent is what yeah. we lost a single women by in Virginia. But every time Ken was attacked on a women's issue, and let, we knew it was coming, and boy, it came fast mm -hmm. and furiously. Mm -hmm. every, every attack was focused on women. Mm -hmm. You know what our response was? We've got, we're gonna create jobs. Mm -hmm. We're gonna focus on the economy. Yeah, exactly. So there was deafening <laughs> silence when you said, you voted against the Violence Against Women Act. You must, you must support violence against women. Mm -hmm. We're gonna create jobs. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> we really need to answer that question. <laughs> now, we don't believe in a payout to the trial lawyers is the right. response, and we believe right. in genuine violence right. against women protection, and that's why this is the bill that we support mm -hmm. um, to genuinely support. And there, bill after bill after bill, um, we support um, health standards in abortion clinics because we care about the women. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be a slaughterhouse right. like the Gosnell That's situation, right. but we were silent. And so those single women in particular mm -hmm. who are being fed mm -hmm. the myths and the lies from the left that we hate them, mm -hmm. had it confirmed mm -hmm. by our silence. We must respond. We must respond like Romney did at that one debate, powerfully, mm -hmm. confidently, knowing that we are right, mm -hmm. that our ideas will resonate if we have the courage to face that um, villainization, that, that demagoguery that the left throws at us. Let's have the courage to go forward with our ideas, with our vision. We have the proof of, the hist of history. We are right. Our ideas come from God above, and he is on our side. But let's go out there with courage and articulate them. I think women will come to our side. But we got to have courage. And there are a lot of women out there in Congress and who are running for Congress. Gosh, there's some really, great, Monica Webby's ad, did you all see that about abortion? That was a phenomenal ad. But there are a lot of uh, women out there who can articulate our message. And I'm, I'm sorry, we really do need more women articulating that message because when women see women articulating that message, they think, hey, maybe I should give them a second right. look. Well, we've got a very important election coming up in November. I'd love to get your thoughts on, and if you think 2014 is gonna be like 2010, where Republicans won the women's vote, or if it's gonna be more like uh, the last presidential cycle. Penny, your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, I, and I was thinking about Joni Ernst and some mm -hmm. of the good candidates that we have. I think Mia Love's still in, still still in the still. race. And so, it, you know, uh, I think it's going to be, I, look, I don't have a crystal ball, but my money's on it being another, another watershed 2010 year. I really believe that, that Republicans, unless they blow it, which they're fully capable, um, <laughs> uh, are, are, are set up to win. Now, I, and I'm even going to predict that they take the Senate. And how do you think, in, in 2010, Obamacare was an issue, and do you see that being an issue that conservatives should be talking it, about? It will be the issue of Obamacare out? will count, because guess what? Everybody's premiums have gone up. Now we see the end result, which, by the way, we told you so. Um, and and we, we know what the end game is that. But also what's happening around the world, what's happening in the Middle East, and, and as, as horrific as we're hearing of what's happening, the beheadings, and uh, you know, we have the Nigerian girls that have been kidnapped. By the way, where are they? Right. Where, where are they? Why has this president not done something about them? What about Miriam Ibrahim, who's languishing in prison in Sudan and her, with her two toddlers, both of whom are American citizens? Um, we, listen, things are falling apart right now, and thank you. we have a feckless, State Department, and unfortunately, unfortunately for the Democrats, and fortunately for the Republicans, every Democrat's going to have to run on that record. Exactly. And it's we've got to we need actually folks that are willing to stand up. So anyway, I'm very I feel very bullish about what what's going to happen in uh, in the next election. And I think we have the other thing is not in every single case, but overall, I think. Folks like me, the, the conservative activists, the Tea Party types, have been able to find candidates that work for us and work for the establishment. I think of Ed Gillespie in Virginia is a perfect example of that. Um, Joni Ernst in, in um, Nebraska? Iowa. I, Iowa. Iowa. And, and other great candidates who are a really good spokesperson for our causes and also are really good candidates and know how to raise money. And you guys, it's a dirty secret. 
but if you can't raise the money, you can't win. Mm -hmm. I hate that we're out of time because we could talk all day uh, on this topic and more, but will you all join me in thanking our panelists today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.